All right, how you doing? This is Kevin McCain with Idaho Art Classes and, uh, and Kevin McCain Studios. So I'm going to be talking today, we're going to do um, some, um, we're going to do construction drawing. And so we're going to use those concepts. Now we've already talked about, we've talked about how to take proportional measurements. Uh, we've talked about center lines and mirroring. And we're not forgetting those things. This is just another tool that we're going to add to our arsenal when we're drawing. So the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to start with that that uh, preliminary sketch or rough sketch like we did last time. And I'm going to start to sort of look to where and how big stuff is to position it, you know, here on the page or what. Um, And so, I'm just, this is just, I'm looking for, this is called, a, called an envelope, so you're basically looking for the basic shape of stuff to help you out in the beginning stages of your drawing, so you'll be able to work it out a little easier, what's going on, and so forth and so on. So... Alright, so here's what we're going to do. Now I could still, I, I need my increment of measure. So uh, that increment of measure is going to be just like before. We're going to use the, the cube height. And I'm going to check, see what the cube height is. And I want something, now this is going to be where the pair is touching right through here. And again, I could do this thing where we do sort of this uh, just very rudimentary sort of, of drawing. This is not the kind of drawing that's going to, that this isn't going to be in the loo. It's not, it's, it's not going to be kept around for posterity. It's not that impressive. It's not supposed to be. The whole point of this is to check out where is the, uh, where's the object in relationship to other stuff. Put down a little placeholder for this stuff just to get sort of a jumping off point for how we're going to organize the different things. That's what that rough sketch is for. So I can certainly put in this rough sketch and I'm going to I'm going to have a little a little picture so you know what it is I'm looking at. I've got the margarita glass over here. And we're going to go ahead and put the margarita glass in there. Try to avoid the the desire to sing some sort of song that relates to margaritas or what that I don't own the rights to by certain so and so's that may remain nameless, <laughs> certain artists, certain certain musicians, what have you. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start off with you know this being about the height of this cube, and the cube should divide into this about three times. If it doesn't, I took a quick measurement. And, and that that will give me just a, a rough jumping off point so I won't, this won't have to stretch. And so I'm going to say, all right, let's lock that in. Let's lock that in as, as my increment of measure. I'm looking, at this, uh, I'm looking at this cube that is a front view. And since it's a cube, that means that this right here should be a true square. So I should be able to take this here and bring that there. And that's going to have the, the width. I just did a quick measurement that the height this is... It's as wide as it is tall. And I usually will start again with that increment of measure. Um, it can really help. Now I have a feeling, I, I can't prove it yet, but this is probably going to stretch this direction. I probably should have taken the height and then checked the... Um, I could check the width of the entire still life by that by the height of of that cube and so it's about two and a half so let's let's check that if we start here and this is the beginning we go well, that's one right there that's two well we might be able to make it um so good deal so again we're going to go ahead and we've we've got this again the envelope helps you that with that we use the 
the uh, the measuring we just use some proportional measuring with that um, we could also remember we can uh, measure angles by taking your pencil and you 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 rotate like the hands of a clock and you start asking yourself if you put it on an angle is that five till or is it you know is it eight minutes till or is it you know ten minutes till or is it thirteen minutes till what's what's that basic angle and we're usually pretty dialed in when it comes to to clocks and so that can be a much easier way of, of checking the the uh, the diagonal that you're looking at by asking yourself what time what time is it and I think my I'm going to come over here I'm going to keep this for now truly parallel we haven't talked about perspective yet so again we're going to use the three sets of three lines that are parallel rule instead of putting all four lines in there I could if I want to but there's not a specific reason for this particular drawing um, so I'm going to end up with and this would come off of here that's closing down that's pretty close to parallel. I'd end up with a cube. This is a front view cube. And we go ahead and go, all right, well, front view cube, no problem. Um, and then we've got on here, we've got the uh, teacup. So we could go ahead and find the middle with X marks the spot. If this is the back and that's there and this is this side and this is that side. Again, I can go ahead and make sure this is one I, I kind of missed it so we're gonna, I, I, I inverted my hand so I actually see the dot I was aiming for otherwise my hand would cover it that's now the middle of my cube and then from there we're gonna go ahead and bring up a center line changing pencils out here so I'm gonna go ahead and change it and I'm gonna bring a center line out there and if I went ahead and measured my increment of measure, which is the height of that cube, and I measured the height of the cup, they're going to be about the same. So I can say, all right, well, if this is the foot where that cup is sitting, now again, there's going to be an ellipse here. Uh, so it's going to change it slightly, but it's not going to be so much, it's going to be a big deal. Let's go ahead and, and put that height right there. Um, the other thing is, I need to just, you know, is the, is the cube in front of the in front of the bottle and the cube is in front of the bottle and so we're gonna go ahead and if we took a measurement on this bottle at the widest part we're gonna find out that this bottle is probably you know you can go ahead and measure it it's gonna be just over two and a half times as tall as it is wide so I could say, all right, well, I know that, that it, it starts over here. Um, and I'm going to have the picture that I'm drawing. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit different, uh, a little bit different photograph for you guys so that it'll be a little bit easier to draw. This is the closer things get to you, you start to have some overlaps and you have to start using sort of your imagination to guesstimate where this is. Um, but we said, all right, well, if, if it's, you know, two times as tall as it is wide, that's great, but we need the increment of measure. So we take that increment of measure and we can measure the width and we said, all right, well, so one and a half times wide, that's about three, one and a half by three. So we take this and go, all right, this is my, this is my height right here. And then if this is where this starts, we go, okay, what's the, that's one. And we said it was half of that, so we take half of this right here, bring this over. That's now the width of the bottle. And then we said, all right, well, this bottle is going to be behind here. So if this is, again, behind that, behind the cube, this is the cube's corner right there. We're, tr we're going to try to establish the rectangle. So this is the this side of the rectangle. This is this side of the rectangle. Uh, with that height and width lines is what we're using. Take this, we're going to go over three times. One, oh, it's, that's one, that's two, that's three. That's probably outside. 
Yeah, so this is going to go off the page a little bit um, in terms of go off the video a little bit um, in terms of the height of that of that bottle. But now I've got the I've got the rectangle, so these will go up and attach to that corner. And it's not really uh, it's not really a drawing about the bottle as much, so I don't mind that the bottle is going to be going off the video a little bit. Um, we then have that the we have this is the height of the cup and if we if we if we cut off the little handle off this cup we'll find out that it's a little wider than it is tall so not by much not, not a ton but we'd say all right well again this is this is as, as tall as this is um, and we want to make this again a we want to we want to try to see if we can perhaps center this on this cube, and I sort of have I take a, a, a horizontal alignment, and this cup is slicing this, and this is about where it's sitting. That's my now I have a corner, and I can take the this height right here and bring it over there. Now this is again this is going to be the the bottle's going to be turning away from here uh, already. This is going to be coming in, so they actually won't ever touch. But right now, it looks like the two rect well, the rectangles are. They're right on top of one another. That's called a coincidence. Okay. Um, and we said, all right, well, this thing is just a little bit wider than it is tall. So I'm just going to go ahead and add just a little bit. Now, it's it's deceptive. The cup looks like it's taller, but the reason why is, is, is that where it, it, it comes in makes it look taller than what it actually is. All right, so we've got the rectangle for the bottle, we've got the rectangle for the cup, and we want the rectangle for the margarita glass. Um, we've got this pear down here. Um, I should have noticed now, again, I'm just moving stuff around a little bit, but if I had dropped this down a little bit, because I'm looking at the pear and I'm going, you know what, this this cube is about that far behind the pear. If I dropped the pear down that much, it would have brought the bottle down in here onto the into the scene. Um, so again, I could I, I don't I'm not out a whole lot. I could still at the point where you drop everything because we're just this is positioning and all we have is rectangles. Now if I had spent copious amounts of time, you know, 30, 40 minutes, an hour drawing this, I'd be like, oh come on. So again, we're kind of we we want to sneak up sort of on the proportions, but I'm just going to go ahead and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this this pair, which sits about here, and I'm just, so I'm, I'm basically scooting it back. It comes a little higher up the cup right now. Um, it hits now. I'm going to go ahead and use corner to corner that armature rectangle. Now you may not be able to see the corners out here, but I'm, I, even if I can't see the corner, I try to you know, draw outside my box if I could to, to, to get that. Otherwise, I'm going to have a heck of a time doing this. Um, all right, so we have that that's supposedly the, the middle. And I'm going to check it because I have two different ones, but one of the lines is bending pretty severely, but that's pretty close. So we're going to use this right here. As my center line. Now, if I'm having a hard time drawing the center line, get out your T square, and if you've got a triangle, put the triangle on there. Okay, and then go ahead and just, you know, drop a nice straight line. Instead of trying, you know, this isn't, you know, use use another time to, to for a, sort of like a an independent you know, victory or something. That's that's not what we're doing. We're just trying to get it. As straight as possible for the construction phase of this. So again, we've got we've got our our center line here. I'm just going to darken it slightly. I'm going to darken a little bit more than, than than I would. Obviously, I keep this, or maybe not so obviously. But if I was drawing this myself, because you know I know uh, some, sometimes what it may seem it may see, anyways whatever. I've been doing it a long time, so some but. Um, with the with the center lines, I usually would keep it light so I can make it I can make it um, a little lighter. Uh, this this time we're actually making it a little bit darker just so we can pick it up on the camera 
And, and so, you know, I want to make it so I could erase it so no one would ever know how the how the trick was done, so to speak. Um, but I've got I've got this pair, and this pair. I could start to go, hey, how much do I see of this? And I could even take the, how wide is the pair using the, you know, my little increment of measure and the pair is, you know, just, it's not quite a fourth. Um, so it's, it's wider than the, than the height of this cube. And we're going to say that the pair starts about here. And then we're going to say, all right, well, it's one. So that's one right there. Whoops and then less than a fourth. So I'm going to come down here. Okay, that's less than a fourth. I can check it. One, two, three, four, and almost five. So we'll go ahead. I think that's a little strong. So I, I didn't I didn't add all of it, but that's, that's that. We have that the pair starts here. And so again, we took a, a measurement of the height and it's about one and a half times this. So we go, okay, that's, that's one. And then come over here and add about half. So, you know, that's going to be right about there. And again, we can go ahead and create a rectangle. So we can start constructing this at a point which we're going to use the construction, but we still want the height lines and the width lines. Now with the pair, we're actually going to worry about not the center line so much like these things are symmetrical. We're actually going to use what we call an axis line because it's a pair it leans it's organic and stuff like that. Um, the other thing is, is I'm going to go ahead and if I take a vertical sort of alignment uh, on this piece of fruit, uh, we're going to find that the that this margarita glass is just to the right of the center line. So I'm going to go ahead, or yeah, just to the right. And so I'm going to put a line here, and I'm going to I'm also going to look at, at the foot and say if this is the foot of the pair, is the margarita glass in front or in back of that? And if I looked at that, I'd find out that, hey, indeed the margarita glass is uh, to the right of that. I still like that this is kind of being contained within that that initial really rough envelope. So we have, we've, it gives us a guide. We broke outside it, but again, we could have shrunk it, but I decided not to, not to do that, not to take the extra time. But um, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing that we've got that, in, you know, that we put that down because it helps us anchor in our decisions. So I can take this margarita glass and if I, if I went ahead and, and measured it, I'm going to find out that it's two in a little bit. So that's one, that's two. And that, that, so if, again, if we take the measurement, it's two and I'm going to have to read, uh, I'm going to remeasure this. That's one, that's two. That's just above a third. So I take this line. What's a third? That's one. That's two. That's a little more than a third. And that's what that was, a little more than a third. So one, two, just above a third. Take that. Mark this. Um, so we've got now we've got this margarita glass. So we've got, you know, this is now. Again, this rectangle. For this margarita glass and and this is just the rough end we're just getting everything in its rectangle and everything with a center line so go ahead and put on here and I've got these other lines that I can check this against so it looks fairly straight if I was confused or if I didn't know if it was straight I get out my my T square, but now I've got my center line for the bottle. I've got my center line for the cup. I've got the center line for the uh, the margarita glass. Um, 
And just with a nod to measuring, we can double ahead and double check. Because my line isn't straight, really, and this is also tipping up a little bit. So maybe we're going to go ahead and define, because I'm going to build inside this margarita glass. So I'm going to go ahead and just clarify a little bit what's the... Take this and straighten this out. This is where this starts, right here. Um, this is where it stops. Again, right about here. And then we can go ahead and bring up that vertical line. All right. <laughs> well, that that fell apart real quick, didn't it? Um. Line this up with that line I just made. And there's my rectangle for the margarita glass. All right, so let's do some construction. And construction, again, is just to help us with our basic shapes. So we talked about construction being a combination of circles and modified triangles and squares and all that good stuff. So if I look at this pair, and this pair has an axis line. In other words, this pair, and we're trying it by the axis, we're looking from where the, the stem is, and we're looking to where the flower is, um, the, you know, the underside, on the underside of that pair. So I'm going to end up with this being that axis line. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to construct the pair, which is basically uh, a, a modified sphere. In other words, it's not a complete sphere, it's got some clunkiness going on, but it's basically a sphere meets a modified triangle. Okay. Okay, that's the basic idea of that pair. Now this is the bulb of this pair is a little higher than what I made it. So as you start looking at stuff, you're gonna start looking for the shapes where they start to intersect because that's going to give us the look of the object we're drawing. And of course we got the stem coming out from the um, from the top of the pair. Um, we then also said, all right, well let's let's do the uh, the little teacup. So the teacup is going to be sitting here. Now it's going to have an ellipse, so it's actually going to be bending in front of there a little bit. But we then have we have where the where the the body of the teacup starts, and let's double check that this is symmetrical right to left. Because if, if that yeah, I moved it out, which is what I thought. Let's go ahead and keep it here, and then I'll let's make sure that's still symmetrical. That's to there. This is to there. It's not. So okay, so now we got it symmetrical, and now I think I added what I wanted, which was. I want it just a little bit wider than it is tall. And again, it doesn't look like it's wider than it is tall when we look at the cup. And that's because it's an illusion, and we'll show you that. So this is basically, the idea of this cup is that the cup is a, a very basic trapezoid. If we want it with its most rudimentary form, or in other words, a trapezoid for us, we can say it's just a modified triangle. So. Or take that modified triangle, and again, where it hits over here, as long as they're symmetrical and that's a perpendicular line, this should be hitting the same place as that, which it's close but not quite. And that's why my angle is off a little bit, because my angle needs to be hitting here. So this is the the basic idea of this cup. Now I think the cup is just it's not quite that much of an angle. So we're going to come back. I'm going to do this one first. I, I, I usually do my left. Uh, I start with my left because I, you know, I'm, I'm left-hand dominant. 
But now I've got, I can measure this off the center line and do the same thing over here by marking how far that is off the center line for that. This is basic mirroring. This is the same idea that we're using, trying to get equal distances off of the center line. So we're still using it even for our construction. So now, as long as this is equal distant, in other words, that this is the same distance here as there, that's the same distance there, and that's the same distance there, and if these lines are pretty close to perpendicular, these angles should be the same. Okay? And if we look at this cup, we're going to see that at the very top, and this is why this thing looks so thin, it has a reverse curve to it. And do you see how that reverse curve, just that little bit, all of a sudden makes it look very, very, very thin. It's an illusion. It's a wonderful thing that, that we could do with arcs and things like that. Okay, and then we could come over here and again we could go ahead and this needs to bend and come in and bend out a little bit and come in and bend out a little bit more and come in. Okay, so again now we're trying to get this symmetrical on both sides. Now for the underside of the teacup, again, we have basically two little trapezoids. So we have this trapezoid here, and again, if this is perpendicular, it's, it's not, it's actually curving down a little bit through here, so we'll bring it up just a bit. And if we take this to here, and we take that distance, we need to make sure that, that distance is the same on the opposite side. So again, now we're mirroring. This is exactly what mirroring is, is you're checking stuff by how far distance something is. So even when we're building with this construction, sometimes we need a little mirroring to help us out. And then this flares open again with another trapezoid or a modified triangle, once again, for the base of this. Okay. And again, we could take this, as long as this is perpendicular line, take that distance off the center line to there, and this distance off the center line to there, and that should now be the same. Now, this line over here, whoops, and don't be afraid if you have to do something like this, it's no big deal. Uh, again, because I would race this, but let's, it looks like my outline is just a little bit off, so let's go ahead and straighten that up. And then we said, all right, let's make sure that this distance there is the same as that distance there. Uh, again, we, and we can check this to make sure this is perpendicular, you know. Um, but if, we, uh, if, we, if we've done that right, again, we should be able to measure from here to the center line, from the center line over. And again, we should go ahead and be able to put together some trapezoids that are truly uh, perpendicular. Now, if I, if, I, if I doubted that they were, I could bring this all the way up onto the center line and use a, the true triangle to double check this because again, as long as this is meeting at the same, coming down and meeting at the same place, those angles should be the same. Uh, I could do the same thing here. Take this down to meet the center line and if this is equal distance again that should hit the exact same place and if it does, that means that angle is the same. You know, so again, you can use these sort of these triangles to help us, but this is the basic construction of that teacup. And then we just go ahead and say, and on top of the teacup, um, we've got this little, now I haven't put the ellipses, but we've talked enough about ellipses that I, I, have, I have perfect confidence in you, you folks, that you can get the, the ellipse put on here. Again, where this hits here, this would be the points for the major axis points. We then would have the minor axis points on the center line. Again, you'd look at that thing and say, hey, how open is that ellipse? And you could even take a measurement and try to divide it into the full height. But I'm going to say that my ellipse is about like that. Again, this should be equal distance from the center. That's probably too far open, truth be told. That's actually, so I'm going to bring this down, bring it in. But now we've got the setup for doing an ellipse, major, minor axis, all that good stuff. Maybe I'll do one of them. Maybe I'll finish that out. But we're going to come back in here for this other stuff. Again, I've got my, uh, we've got this, this, um, 
we have this pair, right? So again, we have this pair right through here. And the pair is only approximately symmetrical, so we're not worried quite so much about the pair. So we got the pair there, the pair comes, there's a little bit of a, sort of it comes over a little bit, and then it kind of swells out a little bit. So I'm, I'm looking at this pair, um, this actually is a little bit too round right through here, this comes up and then this kind of has a real shelf that comes out. But, so again we want to make sure that we have a nod to the fact that this, the bulb on this pair is not, you know, it's not a baseball, it, it's got some, some irregularities, some idiosyncrasies, because it is indeed a pair. Um, but we didn't come here to draw the pair, we really didn't, so. Um, and if I look at this, this actually, when this one actually finishes up a little bit higher, in terms of this part of the sphere, and this one should be a little bit lower, but again, I didn't come here to just talk about, do, about drawing a pair. We're, we're going to draw stuff that we're going to move on to the stuff that's a little bit, a little bit more challenging. That's and not that a pair can't be challenging, but we're here to deal with construction. And we did use construction on the pair. Now we're going to do it with some things that are a little more symmetrical. I'm just uh, also I'm just trying to refine just a little bit my uh, my cube that we've got. Again, if I was want to make sure that this is in good and straight. I can I can get my triangle if I have to. And don't be afraid if you pull that. It's just trying to straighten out a line. I mean I know I could sit there and try and, and do that line over and over and over again. Draw it over, over and over again until it's nice and straight. But you know what I, I could I, I could you know it doesn't have to be like oh this is a personal victory struggle. I'll just grab the t the triangle, straighten it out, go on, you know. Because uh, this is still this is still just the beginning stages of this drawing. This isn't this isn't a finished drawing by any you know, stretch of the imagination. Now we're gonna get to the fun ones again. If we're if we're constructing over here, we're gonna start with this this bottle, and this bottle is just a very at the top is just a rectangle. So we can go ahead, and I could have measured that rectangle to see how 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 long the distance of the of this rectangle divides into the rest of the bottle. Uh, and all that stuff. This looks like it's a little bit... I'm using the center line as I construct. So there's my... There's my rectangle. And then the sides of this, from the rectangle, we have a triangle. Okay. So, again, we can go ahead and make the triangle for this. Bring this over. Um... There's my triangle. Um, so my triangle is off a little bit on this side. So we'll go ahead and again we did a little bit of a mirroring technique. Um, just double check because again I'm kind of to the. I guess that's not as far as I thought it was. It was beyond my mark because it was a little dull, but I thought so. I pushed it just a little bit further. And it needs to come out from right about there. Um, but then we're gonna we have the circle. So we're gonna put the circle, and the circle actually is supposed to come through the corners. It's called marrying a shape. So this the shape sits right on top of there. It's it's it, it does, it's not like this. It's not like a little circle with a little dunce cap on or something. That's that's not what we're trying to do. We're actually trying to have it come right through the corners of this this, this triangle. In the beginning this is kind of, it, it can seem kind of strange while we're doing this. Um, in fact that circle needs to come through there and then come up a little bit a little bit higher for it to be a circle. Uh, and then the circle is going to come down through here. We're going to draw through this pair. So I'm going to go ahead and envision this entire circle. This circle would have break, be breaking outside
Okay, I got something off. Because I can tell you right now that bottle is not is not going to stop before it hits the rest through, through the rest of it. So that means either my triangle is too long. Oh, yeah, it's, it's the triangle. So the circle needs to move up. So that means the triangle got too long. And that's because I'm looking and going, hey, here's the base of this thing. <laughs> and so before I'm sitting there worrying too much about this circle, and I was, I was worrying just too much about, uh, I need to put it in the right place. So this would then be, again, where this circle should, pr which should probably fit in terms of where it is on, on the bottle. Then there is a, a little bit of a trapezoid that comes down off of there. And then we have the foot that is basically another trapezoid like so. And then we have another trapezoid like so, and that's the foot. So I want to get that established first. And that moves everything. So by the time that, that's going to give me a triangle that's going to be coming off of here. Yeah. So we're going to end up with a triangle that's going to be sitting. And I need to push that out far enough. Check the check the length. Check the length. Okay. So that right there is the is the triangle there. This is the triangle here. Right. We then have through that triangle we have this the circle. Now because it's further up, the circle is going to be a little bit thinner as well. So it's just going to barely, you know, get close to touching, which so we're going to get up with a with a circle again that's in, that's ending right here, okay. And then from that circle, from the tummy of this thing, it stretches a little bit. It looks like an egg shape, and that's because off the bottom of this, we're going to have another triangle that inverts. And so it's going to have like a trapezoid that's pointing down. Uh, I need to make sure that this is starting off equal distant from the center line. I get a mirroring technique. So that needs to be starting right about there. Then we can take this down and through to the to that center line, finish the triangle out so that those sides are pretty close to symmetrical. This then will stretches this a little bit. Okay. So that will stretch down and then we're going to have a little bit. And then we have the foot on this, on the bottom of this, um, on the bottom of my bottle. And so this comes out a little bit. Wait a minute, where do we start that? Go ahead and get that to there and that to there. I won't be able to see this one, but it will help me if it was, as I'm drawing it to draw it symmetrically as if I could see it. And then we'd have this come out, and then we'd have it come back in a little bit. Okay, so that's the basic construction of this, this bottle. And part of this is don't be afraid to, to change it if it's not right. I went ahead and modified it because it wasn't quite right. I caught it um, going in. And then we're going to we're going to go into construct for the margarita glass. Now, you know, of course, at some point we would come in here and this gets a little bit wider for the cork, so you could go ahead and make this rectangle. Now that we've got it sort of roughed out, we can make the little part that's a little wider on there, and this comes would come down. We, if you want to, you actually start to draw this. Right, so we can continue, so we can start to draw out this object. Now, if if I if I drew this and I start to go, hmm, I wonder if it's seeing like it's a little, little on the, on the skinny side. And this also starts to feel like it's getting a little bit out of. No, okay. So if it feels like it's getting a little on the skinny side while I'm drawing this, or a little bit on the beefy side, like it's too thick. Don't be afraid to reassess it. If I made this a little skinnier, it's going to seem taller. If I make it wider, it's going to seem fatter and, and more stout. So, you know, again, just keep that in mind while, while, you're, while you're dealing with this. 
Again, I could go ahead and draw this this in. Um, now, there's part of this that we haven't we haven't talked about is that this bottle has this the, you know this you know this um, grass or whatever they use straw. I'm not sure on the outside of it that that they stretch over it. It's almost like a coat, if you will. And so I could go ahead and go. Well, how far up does it come up the circle? Right, and just like a coat, it's gonna, or you know, a piece of clothing, it's gonna conform itself to the, you know, to the form of this bottle. So I could put this just like a skin going over the top of that bottle and rounding it out slightly. As again, that's what's happening. There's a little bit of a coat that's wearing a coat or a, a shirt or whatever we want to, you know, however we want to think about this. Now again, I haven't turned these into ellipses. I'm just trying to keep this straight. And, and the reason why is because you can see right now that one side is starting in different places than the other. Uh, and so that's why I want to do that, to keep it again symmetrical as I'm putting this coat on this. And this coat over here is getting a little thinner down there. And so if I like that, I'm going to do the same thing over here. You can try to keep that symmetry. And then we're going to come over here for the margarita glass. And we go, okay, here's my margarita glass. And the margarita glass, now sometimes people have a real a real time with this with this margarita glass. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the space for the opening. So I would have my major minor axis in there and the top and bottom or the front and back I should say. This would be the points on the minor axis and the major axis would go right through the middle right about there. And so you would you'd set this up. I could set this up very quickly for Again, an ellipse at, at, for that margarita glass. Now, I'm not going to do the ellipse right now, but I just want you to understand we, we could get that set up. And then we're going to do or create or draw what the margarita glass actually looks like. And that is that it's basically, this again, this small rectangle is for the, for the ellipse. And again, once I've drawn this by hand, well, then I can go there over there and try to, you know, straighten it out. Uh, you know, don't try to do it first, all you know, because what happens is we want to be making our decisions by hand, and this is a little bit closer here than it is there, so I'd have to kind of move this on it, line down, but I'm not worried a ton about it right now. Um, so again, then I'd have this rectangle here. On the bottom of the rectangle, we're going to have a, a square, and I could actually mark sort of the middle of this thing. Uh, because the margarita glass, the the stem to the, the margarita glass part is about halfway. It's just above it. And so that's what this mark is for. It gives me a landmark. So again, we go ahead and put the... And I'm looking to put this square on symmetrically and make it, you know, go across there just, just like it should do. And then we're going to come in here. Um, this needs to be a little taller here, so this is going to drop down a bit. So we're going to go ahead and drop this down a little bit more. Uh, that's going to drop this down just a little bit more, like about right about there. Okay. So I'm making these decisions as I go with these constructions. I, I, I want you to understand when I say something is fluid, that means, yeah, we can change it. No big deal. No big thing. And again, now that we've got this... Uh, margarita glass like this. So this is, and we can we have the fact that this flares a little bit as a triangle here. It flares a little bit as a triangle down here, and then we have the foot of the margarita glass. And again, this is going to round down because it's it's uh, you know going to have an ellipse on here, so the ellipse would touch here or something like that. But I could already start to go, hey, wait a minute, this is going to be where this touches because this is going to be. In the major minor axis point. So if this is the minor axis, that's the same distance there. You know, we start to put that on there. That this right here is, is where this the sides of this are going to hit. Um, and then if we look at this margarita glass and take our eyes out, out of focus or, or look at sort of the most the most simple. Now the foot of this thing is almost as wide as it is tall. It's not quite, but it's close. So I'm going to bring this in just a bit on this side. What happens if people make that thing too small? And it starts to look like the margarita glass, you know, has 
uh, like it's gonna the, the foot will snap right off. So we got to give it a big enough foot that it looks like the thing can stand up. Okay. So again, we go ahead and go. All right, let's go ahead and and uh, straighten that out. Again, for right now, it's not gonna stay straight. So I'm gonna keep that keep that you know light. And then again, we can go ahead and go. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead. And there's this is the little skirt for this margarita glass coming up and onto there. Okay. So this is construction. It's just constructing these basic shapes from simple shapes and using that along with a little bit of symmetry we're going to have some, some now this again has opens up to a, you know, we can even bring the triangle up there and this triangle will come down here and you know we could go ahead and, and the stem is that we started out with a strand that was supposed to be just kind of straight and now we're going to go ahead and start to make this stem, you know, be beefy enough to be able to, to actually support the glass. Again, we want, we don't, that's sometimes we do that where we make the glass just too dainty and it looks like it would just snap right off. You couldn't hold its weight. And uh, so we don't want that. That's, that's not, uh, I think this is going to be, you know, push over here and then this is going to push over here off the center line. Um, again, the camera might be even more distorted because you're to the, you know, a little bit to the side of me. Um, okay, that's not connecting to the same place. Straighten that out. Yep, see how that's off? That needs to come up here. That changes the angle. Just that little bit will really help. And again, this also says that it should be equal distance from here to there. Okay. And again, this, this will help with the symmetry part. Now, sometimes people are like, well, how would I finish this out? Well, first off, this is round. We're going to start cutting the shapes, modifying the shapes. Now, this actually rounds down and through. Whoops. Um... Now normally I'd be trying to stay as loose as possible, but I, I, it's, it's really kind of a, a strange angle the way I have to hold my, my arm to get out of the way of the camera, but so that would be a little easier. It's also easier working a little bit more on, on sort of a, uh, what's called a, uh, a drawing horse, which is sort of like a makeshift drafting table, or what we do is we take and we put the you know, our board on our knees. It's a little nicer way to draw. Uh, and so we're try just trying to, to get this figured out. So again, this would come down. Not quite symmetrical, so if I was having trouble with this, again, I could mirror, because this is not exactly the same curve as that one. Not bad, but it's certainly not perfect. Um, we would then bring this down, this rounds, and so this would come down Onto there. This would then round. I think I'll, I'm going to round it out even more. So again, I like that one. Uh, we're going to bring this and so people talk about working right and left the center line. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to take a shape through here, which is almost like an egg shape. There we go. This is a little more symmetrical where this is right now. So again, that the whole that's the idea of working right to left. The center line is looking for. So if this is an egg shape, I can. It's a little bit easier to make that shape. And again, this is right right in line with construction. Construction is just using shapes that are gonna gonna help us. Uh, why wouldn't we do that, right? And so and then we go okay. This would then come down. Come down here. This comes off of here. This will then come down here. This will come off of here and come down here, like so. Right? And then this would come down here, like so, and merge onto there. 
apologize if, I, if I'm trying to get in here. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way so you can Whoops, that was a mistake. But so you can see what I'm doing. Like so. Um, and don't be afraid to make a decision on the fly. Like right now, this just seems like this is not long enough. So I'm going to move this out, which means I have to move that side too. But I'm going to bring this out. There we go. That's looking a little bit more like the curve I need. Okay. And so we're going to do the same thing over here. And again, if I was having problems with this, I could mirror it. Right now it's flat as a pancake because we have nothing that says volume because we have no ellipses. But we could say, all right, well, let's go ahead and add. So now this side here is going to be the same as this side here. Remember that the measuring and all that is, is just a tool. That's all it is. And, and so at the end of the day, we, we, we know we, we want to go ahead and use it, you know, when we need to. So if I had to mirror this, well, that's fine. Again, don't think that, oh, I had to mirror. That means I can't, you know, do it or something. That's, that's not, it just, just helps you. Why wouldn't you do something that helps you? Uh, another thing that helps is when we're dealing with symmetry is we can flip this upside down. When we turn something upside down, our eyes much more easily pick up when shapes are out of whack symmetrically. Uh, that's an old drawing trick. So why wouldn't we use it? Now, I don't have a, uh, an eraser within reach, which was an oversight on my part. But let's go ahead and bring this in through here. Bring this in through there. Bring that down. Again, we've got this margarita glass. Now this margarita glass is also looking a little beefy through the stem. And so again, I can make this stem just a little bit thinner. Okay. Now I may have shortened the stem too. Uh, by the time I drop this, I probably should have dropped that. This is going to get close to there, but again, Part of it might be it's just it's just that I didn't do it thin enough, which it could certainly be the case. Just that a little bit goes a long way for the illusion, just like we did here. What looks you know thick and bulky, and all of a sudden you just give it a reverse curve, and all of a sudden that thing starts to look very elegant and very and much thinner. So part of it's illusion. That little that sort of thing is like a it's almost like a visual sleight of hand, if you will. Now we do have that this this little part is round, so it's actually going in front of the stem. So overlaps are very, very powerful tools. So we'll just overlap in front of there. Just like this right through here. Let me, let me get there. I'm trying to jump ahead. As this comes through here. This overlaps that. So this, again, this overlaps that. So that means this line's gonna come in front of it. That's how we know it overlaps. Uh, and that becomes very, very important. Now, again, we could take all this stuff and, and go ahead and turn it into If I wanted to, I could get a piece of paper and use that technique for tracking an ellipse all the way through its trajectory. And that's one of the videos I have on YouTube that talks to us about how to how to do you know all where you can put the exact points that the ellipse should be all the way through any elliptical trajectory. It's it's kind of a cool little trick that drafting folks used to do back in the day when there were no there, there weren't templates for every ellipse out there. There were a lot, but you get these big ellipses like this, and 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 there wasn't, you know, going to be just the right ellipse template to fit it. And so they would use that technique to then create, you know, a pretty stunning ellipse. Um, this isn't bad, but it's, you know, it's it's far from perfect. But then again, you know, we're 
We don't have to worry about perfection. It's just getting a little flat through here. So as it, it's got to come down, it's got to arc a little bit. So I'd have to erase this little bump in there that's flattening it out. This is a little better side, actually. Uh, but again, I could go ahead and clean that up. And, you know, we can see that... I still think that this needs to come down a little bit. I think it's, 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 it's tapering in too quickly. So we could bring this here. Right. And again, if I thought, and if I thought I had problems, I could go ahead and mirror by actually taking points like that. My lighter charcoal pencil. Take these little points right through there. Um, take them through across here because they're supposed to be perpendicular to the line, right? To make this work, perpendicular to that line or pretty dang close to it. And again, I, you know, I use this for sketching a lot. I'll use mirroring a lot. Um, but it's something like, you know, if, I have, if, if I'm struggling uh, like this, well, what's, what's wrong with giving yourself a hand? Why wouldn't someone do that? I mean, why, why would they make it harder on themselves when they could make it a little bit easier? Okay, so this says that should be right, right about there. And if we took this off the center line, I've got the second pencil so I can mark a little easier. Take this off the center line using my thumb and that end come over here. Thumb and the end, wow, it looks like I'm way out of whack. Which means that's gotta be way out of whack, which might be why it looks like it's bunching up through that ellipse. Is I'm being a little bit more cautious with my measure. Yeah, there's no way this is the same right to left. And that's okay. Now this is really far to my right, so it's, again, it's hard to kind of measure because I'm looking at this thing in perspective. But again, this, you know, just this little bit right here answers, you know, what's what's going on, what's going wrong here. I'm starting at, I'm starting at the wrong place. And even that ellipse is turning a little bit at the wrong place. But, you know, now we go ahead and go, okay, this is supposed to come out here and touch there. So this is, touches through there. This thing comes through here like that. And then this is going to come and touch through there. Okay. And if I wanted to, I could even bring out and say, where, where's this, you know, and I could take that straight across the, the center line. Get a double check it. This is mirroring. Okay. So we're using construction mirroring. We did do, uh, some, some of that, um, site size method. We were certain, certainly siding stuff too. So we're using a combination of all three tools to help us, uh, to help us get a better drawing. And it's, it, it is going to help us. Why, so why wouldn't we use it? So I need to pull out this ellipse. That means this is off too, I'll bet, if we went ahead and measured it. So again, if I wanted to, if I had, you know, again, some, some issues with this, I could give myself three points because the curves are the hardest. And again, so the, the construction guide is close. Uh, but there's still some going to be sometimes when we're going to have to pull out this, you know, the, the, uh, the, the symmetry thing. And, and part of this is now some people will be like, ah, it's close enough for the people I run with. I don't have to worry about it. Again, wow, this is really off of, really out of, you know, really out of symmetry. And you guys are, you guys can probably see it the whole time because you've got a different view of it than I do. Uh, but this is somewhere we can double check. Again, I've got some here now. It's going to be like, okay, this is exactly what's supposed to be happening. And that takes the guesswork out of it. Um, and maybe that's part of why this looks wonky through here. But again, I should probably have where this starts. And again, send it over that direction. So again, make this close to symmetrical. Put it over there. Um, check this. You understand what we're doing here. So again, we're going to use that symmetry to help us with our drawing. That symmetry thing is going to help us through uh, as we're drawing this. And it's going to help us so that we get something... It's going to be much more, you know, again, much more symmetrical. After doing this, I might start to seem like this is a little bit, like I'm starting to wonder if this is now symmetrical, the center line. I don't know. So I, I don't, so I'm, I'm going to check that because if this is this far out of whack, I can't imagine. Yeah, this stem now starts to, is, is starting to look a little weird. So if that's all right, that's not, the whole point of this is so that I can, I can see it. 
The whole point of this is so that you know we can figure it out, and we can get it. We can we can get it um, worked out. Now again, these aren't completely perpendicular, but they're close. You know, again, I could use them, but I could double check things. That's is is this going to make a big difference? Uh, sometimes it can, depending on how how far out of whack they are. Um, that's not going to make you know the biggest difference for this. The uh, the biggest thing that I would say is I think this line has either this moved because I moved the paper a couple times. This is only clamped down; it's not taped down, so it might have gotten a little wonky from that uh, and moved. And again, so I certainly want to make sure that is. But this center line no longer looks to be in the center, and so that's that's what I would check um, is is this in the is the center line <laughs> actually in the center. And you know, I could I, instead of trying to measure, we could just go ahead and go. All right, let's do this. And I'm just showing you different ways. I don't have a problem showing people that you know what this stuff isn't isn't perfect. Uh, and here's how you deal with it, because there's many times that our drawing won't be perfect, but we can make it. You know that we have different tools that we can use, so that we're the only ones that know it. Because between you know this the the measuring and the and everything else. Um, let's do it on this side so I can actually see that line. But through the measuring and all this other stuff, we can make this just almost dead on. Okay, so yeah, center line's out. And there's something going through there, but there were three lines there, and I was using the one to the left instead of the one to the right, and that's a big issue. Doesn't seem like much, but it is. And so I'd have to move this whole stem. I'm gonna I'll, I'll, I'll trim this in, bring this over, you know, make it symmetrical on there which means that this down here probably has some stuff going on too but that's all right again I can I can get that it's just a matter of time getting that all figured out but once we've got this stuff all figured out where we want it well then we can come in here again with these with and and, and go ahead and do our finished line work you know where we can go okay this is you know this is this is where the rubber meets the road this is going to be you know where I'm going to make all this worthwhile that's going to you know make everything look good so I'm starting here with this with this pair but obviously we do this everywhere we would go okay well, and this isn't just the outline there's a little bit of an edge that comes out here as this pair comes you know through here now uh, so it would come out like so and out like so and, and so forth and so on um, you say alright there's the pair you know um, and there's even going to be some overlaps this kind of bulb comes in front of that that back just a little bit so we want to just indicate it we want it a little bit softer but you know what I mean where this comes you know the part where this one actually comes in front of that as this is going behind and this is coming forward so again by by choosing you know again and it's gonna it's it's gonna soften very very quickly but just a little bit of overlap starts to push things forward and backward that means this is going behind this one's coming in front and we can use that again to go ahead and make this just this really nice nice drawing Okay, so I want you guys to go ahead and use the reference that I'm sending you. Lay this thing out using, you know, do your, your rough sketch first, and then after you do your rough sketch, get your increment of measure. Once you've got your increment of measure, this seems like this isn't quite straight. Um, once you've got that increment of measure, so this is not, I have to, I have to move that over a bit. But after you've got that increment of measure, uh, go ahead and, and, you know, measure everything out. Uh, then once you measure it out, get it to where you can put on the rectangles. Once you've got the rectangles, use armature of a rectangle to, to find the center points. Um, and then, you know, once you've got the, the uh, or the center lines, because uh, we always start with some, with a center line with something that's, well, with everything, usually. Um, once we've got that, well, then we can start, you know, doing our construction. And that's the fun part. That's where we really have, again, some of this, some of these really fun, where we start breaking it down and I say fun because it's it makes it much easier that's why it's fun is is, is easier is better for me again this would then be the you know this little coat so this this the, the batting I believe it's called or something like that this goes around behind this then comes in front right that becomes an important juncture where this is you know going around behind and then this is coming in front and of course this would then be elliptical so forth and so on so go ahead and do the best uh, drawing that you can on this 
Uh, try to, you know, remember those contour drawings I sent you? They were showing you how complete a contour drawing could be. So go ahead and use that as your drawing and give us the best drawing that, that you can do. Um, I have some drawings of a similar still life that has a little teacup and then the, the ball looks like sort of like a, uh, a teardrop, the first one we drew. Uh, and I've got, you know, I've got it on one of the value assignments. We're talking about value. And that was from a demo in class that I did. Of course, I, I drew with the rest of the class. I didn't do it in like 20 minutes. But we're, uh, I, I turned that into a value drawing. So, But we first started with this basic stuff with center lines and, you know, and then, and, you know, mirroring where it needed to be mirrored and all that good stuff. Again, this would be done really, really light so that we could then come over with our with our finish lines. That would be, again, these beautiful lines. We'd erase this back a little bit, and then we'd put this gorgeous line on. And that's going to be the stuff that where people go, ooh, wow. And that way you're hiding, you know, how you got there. This is, it's a... You know, it's, it's that mystery part of, of drawing. That's really, it's really fun. So I want you guys to go ahead and use this um, schematic drawing technique uh, to do your stuff, to do your drawing. Uh, please contact me with any questions. And uh, if you're in the class, otherwise, if you're just seeing this on YouTube, I hope you enjoy it. And you guys have yourselves a great day. Be more creative. Bye-bye now.